Hi, Yosefa. Wow, you've been working really hard um, sending these essays immediately. So great work. Uh, let's take a look at what you wrote here about online communication. All right, here's what you wrote. The question of whether presential or online meetings are more effective in workplaces has been discussed over the last few years, especially with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. While some argue that online communication has a myriad of benefits, others have claimed that traditional meetings must not be replaced. This essay will analyze the strengths and weaknesses of this trend. Okay, a couple of things here. I didn't really love this word. It doesn't feel particularly natural, so I would have changed that. Uh, you could have just said in person, that would have been fine. And then here, they're asking you a very specific question. They're saying, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So this goes back to um, the band descriptors under task achievement, where it says uh, the um, position is clear throughout the response. Your answer to this question is your position. And so for it to be clear throughout, you really want to start um, making it crystal clear in your introduction. This is the best place to do it. It's the easiest, clearest way. So rather than saying that you're going to analyze the strengths and weaknesses and just leaving it there, you do have to have a position here and tell us the answer, if the advantages are more or not, okay? So you definitely want to do that when you're aiming for band seven and above. To begin with, there is ample evidence suggesting that online meetings are more efficient and effective. This is largely because having time for traveling to a meeting would not would no longer be an issue. Having time, not having time, but needing time to travel to a meeting would no longer be an issue, especially in crowded cities where workers can easily waste one hour to move from their workplace to another office. Consequently, having more time available allows workers and entrepreneurs to, uh, to make, I don't, I think you mean something else here, uh, maybe to make their time more productive or to make their schedule more productive. I think this is what you're trying to say here. For example, recent empirical research by the UK government demonstrated that since COVID-19 started, the vast majority of workers had three or four more meetings than they used to have before the pandemic. Okay, fine. Nonetheless, there are some socioeconomic disadvantages related to digital communication due to the fact that this trend relies on the internet connection and functional electronic devices. Thus, the access is in some way restricted by people's income, age, and education. And that's a nice sentence. It's complicated. It, complicated. It's long, but it was successfully done, so good. Uh, for example, an extensive study by Oxford University showed that in the countryside of China, less than 20% of individuals have Wi-Fi connections. Thus, some inequalities are certainly involved as the world is moving towards the digital age. Okay. Mm, all right, let me think about that. Mm -hmm. To conclude from the arguments and examples given, besides its downsides, the benefits far outnumber the disadvantages. It can be predicted that for the foreseeable future, fewer, fewer meetings will be face-to-face. -face. All right, that would have been more correct here. Okay. Um, so we're meeting now more online than we do face-to-face. -face. Is this more positive or are the advantages of this more than the disadvantages. Let me think about this to see how you did in terms of task achievement. So I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking about this. I was happy with this paragraph. Um, you know, we talked about it. So any sort of weaknesses or any sort of errors, I think we've already gone over. I'm a little concerned about this. Like your example with um, connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. All right, fine, that's fair. But there's no mention of um, in-person meetings. You did something successful here. You kind of made this implied um, comparison here with like, uh, they're more efficient and effective. And we understand that you mean more efficient than in-person meetings. That's implied. Here there was nothing about that. So I felt like this was just about the negatives of um, online meetings in general. 
But you were right in the previous paragraph to make this connection to face-to-face -face meetings. So I would have liked a little more of this. So for example, in the countryside of China, I mean, what are you suggesting that, you know, they go to, um, you know, have in-person meetings? So that there should have been some element of this in there, this, this um, comparison between the two. Okay. Um, so while I liked it, I did feel like that was a little bit of, um, it was missing here a little bit, this sort of um, mention of face-to-face of -face meetings. Now, another thing that I want to talk to you about is clearly this is the paragraph you support. You decide to put it first. I want to suggest that you put the paragraph you support at the bottom. So in other words, uh, reverse these. Put this one first and then put this one second. The reason for this is that we typically put our concession paragraph first. Our concession paragraph is the one where we talk about the side we don't really support. So that typically comes first because you show that you've analyzed it, that you're open-minded, that you can see any sort of benefits or any sort of validity that the other side has. But in the end, you definitely support your opinion. So you put it at the bottom. It gives it weight. It acts like an anchor. Okay. And it remains in the mind of the reader uh, and it connects to the conclusion better. So that's my suggestion. I would like to see this uh, reversed. I think it makes for stronger coherence and cohesion. Um, okay, so there were a couple of places that were a little awkward in terms of language, but then you did have some areas that were really very strong. So um, it was it was good. Um, you know, again, a couple of things that I would like to see better, but overall it was a nice essay. So why don't we look now at your task one? Let's look at this, uh, school subjects in Germany. The pie chart provides information about the popularity of seven different school subjects in Germany in 2017. From an overall perspective, from the graph, it can be seen that PE and history were the most popular subjects in the school curriculum, whereas IT was the least chosen one. Good. To start with, looking at the highest percentages, it is perfectly clear to observe that PE and history comprised almost half of the total percentage preferences with 22.9 and 22.4% respectively. Conversely, regarding the lower proportions of the chart, biology counted for 7.1, geography made up 6.4, and only minority preferred IT accounting for only 3.7% of the popularity. As a remarkable fact, physics and maths and physics, sorry, again, math and physics obtained almost the same percentage, math just under a fifth, whereas physics represented 18.1%. Finally, it can be observed that sciences, physics, and biology constituted a quarter of the chart. Okay. To sum up, there is not a clear trend among German students. Uh, there are four larger preferences, very different from each other. Okay. Um, grammatically, this was good. No issues. Vocabulary was fine. No problems at all. Okay, it is 166 words. That was fine. Um, I didn't love this. I didn't love it, okay? Um, it didn't really tell us a lot. There are four larger preferences, very different from each other. It didn't really tell us anything. I felt like you were just trying to um, make sure that you were over 150 words, which you don't you don't need to be anymore. I mean, is it difficult to get a high score under 150 words? Yeah, it is difficult, but you don't need 150 words. In other words, they don't penalize you the way they used to for writing under 150 words. You would have been okay. I think that what you could have done here, okay, is rather than have this, which really didn't provide any additional information, is you didn't have to group as much as you did. So, um, I'll tell you what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, I like this, okay, that PE and history comprised almost half, so you grouped them together. That was first. Now, then, I think you could have just added a little more, just space it out, give it a little, give each um, subject a little more room and a little more language because you have it. I mean, you only have seven pieces of information here, so take advantage of it. So I would have said something like, um, while PE, I would have made a new sentence and I would have said something like, while PE um, 
had 22.9% of the preferences, history was only 0.5% behind. So you're showing some, some interesting grammar and you're just kind of stretching it out a little more. Okay, and then here, I definitely would not have put these three in one sentence like this. You missed an opportunity. Where am I? Here I am. You missed an opportunity to really kind of stretch this out and to give it some, some relevance and make it interesting. For example, you mentioned biology, and then you talked about um, here IT. Why, you could have mentioned that, bi, that IT was half of the figure of biology. So that would have been really interesting. Or you could have mentioned that IT was roughly, I don't even know if that's true, but like one sixth or one seventh of um, the figure for history or PE. Okay, so in other words, there was a huge difference in preference uh, from the least popular subject to the most popular subject. You could use some quick math to figure out what that is. Um, but yeah, you could say it was like a, um, it was like six times higher, like uh, the most popular was like six times more popular than the least popular. And you could have said that here, that would have been an interesting thing here instead of this. Um, so in other words, what I want to say is um, that um, stretch this out a little bit, um, you make use of your time to make some relevant arguments and relevant information. Um, but on the whole, I thought it was good. It was, you know, grammatically very accurate, no problems, but um, that's what I would have suggested. Just try to make some relevant connections here because they are going to tell you to make comparisons where relevant. So that's what you want to be doing. Okay. So nice job with this set. Let's see more work. Um, I'm sure that you'll send us something back, back very quickly because I can see you're really uh, working very diligently. All right. So I'll be looking forward to it and good luck.